Okay, now that I've saved this file, what I'm going to do very quickly is delete all the hatches quickly. So there's a neat way to select all the hatches in the project. So select hatch, select all, press OK, delete. Okay, now I can pull this information into format if I wanted to start modeling up the context and yeah. Okay, so I could use this drawing in format now. So I'm going to save this as, get rid of those contours. So I'm going to go to file, export as, oh no, sorry, save as, and DWG. Uh, I was going to call this um, test. Test. Now in format, I'll just show you this very quickly. Now what we can do is we can go and work out the origin of this drawing. I can actually work out this exact coordinate for you and I can bring in the aerial photograph and form it in the same location. I'm not going to do this in the exercise because I want you guys to work on a flat site for this project. We're not going to focus on contours too much. This is more about context and how to use context. So in this instance, I'm going to start format and I'm going to quickly load this DWG file into format and show you what this looks like in format and then how you can go and start extrapolating information and form it quickly. So I'm going to say open sketch locally and then I just want to use my test file open. Ah, there was a problem. We need to scale this drawing because it's, there's a units issue. So if you want to use format, but you can see this is coming quite neatly. The only problem is in the incorrect scale. So if I went and measured something here, it might be correct. Let me just see. I've got a feeling it's not. Let's just find a parking bay. I've had this issue in the past, so let's just pick a... No, this is correct. Very, very strange. The last time I did this, it kept on changing the units. Okay, but this is come, coming in at the correct scale. Brilliant. So now you can see, I can start building up the context very quickly. So let's just grab this layer. What I like to do is, these buildings are put onto layers. So what you do is you edit, you then cut them out, close this group, edit, paste in place. Then you can hide the stuff, but I'm gonna double click on this layer. I'll put this on a different layer. So just use your tab key sometimes. Let's just put this on a layer that I can hide. So I'm just gonna add this to, let's create a new layer. Layer one. I'm going to put this on layer one so that I can switch it off. So I'm going to go to layer one and I'm going to switch off layer one. So this information over here, I can double, oh, let me just double click on it. Okay, so what happens is it will think this is a mesh. You need to just run this command quickly and convert it into a group. Now these are all open objects. I can create a quick rectangle provided that this is flat. So I'm going to create a quick rectangle and I'll show you how quickly it is to start Click here, click there, click down. I hope that they're closed objects. That's usually not the case. It looks like they were, good. Delete that, delete that, delete that. Now I can start extruding these objects. And what I, what I do is I go to street view and I go and count the number of floors and I type times it by three. So in Google Earth, I'll go to street view and I'll go and look at the buildings and then count the floors and then I'll pull them up to the correct level. Okay, for now this is, I'm not expecting this to be 100% correct, but you can see I can build this context very, very quickly. Okay, let me just bring back my layer one. Okay. And what's neat is I can take those pictures, I can take photos of those facades and I can paint those facades onto these buildings. So it'll actually look like the building. Okay, so I can go and take a series of photos, stitch them together in GIMP and then paint them on the surface. Okay, then it'll look like a proper facade. Okay. All right, but this is a good place to start. There's a whole library here. This might crash on this machine. I've been experiencing this sometimes. If you go to, um, you might have to go and add a format library. There is a library that you can download for format where it comes with the trees. I see it wasn't loaded on these machines, sadly, but you can go and download it. Okay, so if you go to Content library, you can go and download this content library. Okay, so they've got a whole library that you can go and download. 
on these machines, download it and save it somewhere where you guys would like to work. See, it's in a zip folder. I'm going to save this to my desktop quickly. It's actually, it's quite small. Let's just see. I'll explode it and then I'll show you how to. I'll put that in your library so that you can use more stuff here, like trees. Okay, but you can see now I've, I can start working in, I've got good context. I can build up the boundary walls very quickly. Okay, so if I grab an edge, I can also pull up an edge. There was a way to extrude edges on this. Let me just see. I'm just going to drag it up. Okay, we'll get to that in a minute. Okay, you can make it a shape and de delete the faces. So what I do is make it a closed shape and then you can delete the faces. Okay. If you want to make a fence line. And this is just so that we can build up some context. To build the roads very quickly, I'll go and find the road layer. So I'll go and find this road network, extract it, make a quick rectangle, close the loops, and then I've got the roads. Very quick. Okay. Then I can put the right materials on them. Okay, I just want to show you the content library very quickly. Let's extract this information here, extract here. I just want to see what's in the library. It should be quite comprehensive, but it'll give you trees, it'll give you everything that you need. Okay, basic information. But what's neat is you can extract these views and you can draw over them. So you can do a lot of freehand sketches over these scenes because what Format is giving you is a very quick scene. And it's what I like about it works really well with AutoCAD. So here you can start, you can see, you can fill in the blanks. You can export this as a, as a view and then sketch over this. So use a light table, for example, print these out, and then you can sketch and work over these. Okay. Okay, let me just go and add this library. So I'm going to go and add the library. Location, I'm going to go and say Format Content with my Select Folder. And now I'm going to have a more comprehensive library. So if I go over here and I go Format Content Library, now I've got a whole lot of stuff. Uh, let me just go back there again. Uh, go back one. I think I went too far. Oh. Ah, all right. Let me just go back to library. I'm, I know what I've done wrong. So this minus this guy. Minus. Add. Double click. And then you're going to double click again. Okay. Select folder. Okay. Now that will work better. If I go here and I go format content library. Now I've got a whole lot more stuff. If I go to trees. Okay, so now I've got vehicles, trees, and vegetation. So now I can grab these objects. And because I've got all these trees, I can quickly go and put them. Okay, I can go and grab different ones. I can scale them. So now you can see in my view. Neat. Okay, so you can see there's a whole lot of stuff that you can use. You can use these 2D libraries. If you've got a SketchUp library, you can use those as well. These, what I do is, these are not made that well, but you just rotate them to suit your scene sometimes. SketchUp has got a good function that these always face the camera. Okay, but so I would use these trees over here. But all that they've done is they've just used that same symbol and they've rotated it a couple times to make it look inside of the group. If I double click, you'll see that they've used the one object and they've rotated it a series of times to make it look like this. And it works. For what we're doing, works fine. Okay, so... Here's a whole lot of stuff that you guys can start using. Okay, trees and vegetation. There's uh, a whole lot of materials they're giving you, a whole lot of people. These are all from SketchUp. Just remember, you can also download, if you go to 3D Warehouse, you can go and download all the SketchUp families and plug them straight into Format. 3D Warehouse. If you sign into 3D Warehouse, you sign in using your Google account, University Google account, you can go and download a lot of this context information. And just to let you know, and this is the, I'll show you here, Pretoria uh, University of Pretoria uh, models. There's a lot of the buildings that you can go and download as well on campus. If we go to Liam Pino's collection, a lot of these buildings have actually been modeled already. A lot of the, the campus buildings, so you can literally download this model and plug it into. Um, so here's Bokinder. There's a much better model of it somewhere else. 
But a lot of the buildings, if you get the building's name, you can go and download the context and plug it in. Okay. So you can see, here's the library, old library building, the cheese grater. Let's download this guy, download. It's going to download this, you know, I'll sign in with Google. I'm just going to pull this model in because there's a lot of this information. You guys can build very comprehensive models quickly. Now it wants my DNA sample. Oops. Oh, I have to go and download that building again. Go down, go down, go down, go down. So a lot of the buildings on campus have been built. Just go and get them and download them. Download. I'll use 2021 for now. Put this on my desktop. I can add my library, so I can add my desktop to the library. And what is neat is that file, if I go to my desktop, that, um, once it downloads, SketchUp here it is here. So it's just telling you this contains a whole lot of information. Okay, it's just I might need to fix that file first. But yeah, it's come in. So let me just bring that in again. I think it's just the way it's been made. I don't think it's oh there we go. I'll leave it on this face over here. Boom. Okay, so all I need to do is go into this file, delete the, the unnecessary information I don't need. And you can see this is a sketchup file. I've plugged it straight in. Voila. Then I can move this. There's some information in here. Maybe it's on a layer that's not visible. So maybe I need to explode this thing. So let's just go and ungroup. And then, yeah, that's good. Now I can move this thing in the right location. Okay, I'll just grab it in a good location. So move. I can move this guy and put it in a good location. And then use all my commands. and then rotate this thing in the right location. Okay. Voila. Just saying for argument's sake. Now you can see... Okay, so a lot of these buildings you can find. You guys can build very comprehensive models very quickly. Okay. And what's nice is when you start using Revit, this stuff plugs straight into Revit. So the way you see it here, it will plug straight into Revit for your context. Okay. Cool. You can adopt the same workflow for this building. This building might actually exist in that, in that SketchUp um, location. So this might actually exist there. So I would go and find this information. Okay. So go and get this information. I'm just going to pause for a bit and just take any questions from the class. I know that you're all busy doing your construction assignment, but I just want to make sure that you guys are actually absorbing the material. So any of you online, what do you guys think of this so far? Any questions? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Okay, cool. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right. Right, so we've got some good information to work with. You can start building the library, and if this is, you know how to work with AutoCAD a bit, you can start edit, putting these on good layers so that you can switch them on and off the whole time. I just want to make sure these things are usually on very poor layers. Okay, but you can see I can isolate just the trees, and I can quickly go and put in the trees. What's nice is once you put a tree in, you can go and scale these objects. Okay. 
So you can go and create a whole series of these different scaled objects. And what I like about this, this plugs straight into Revit and it looks quite neat as you plug it in. Okay, going forward. So you don't have to do a lot of unnecessary work in Revit. This is purely massing. Okay, it's very neat. I can do all my solar studies. I can go and do proper sun studies. And this exact coordinate, if you know where this coordinate is, I can then pull in the aerial photograph. This, I'll try and get it to work as accurately as possible. I'll see. But I can actually give you that actual coordinate and we can bring it in 100% accurately. I don't have that. I'll have to use Q just to get that coordinate correctly. But I'm just going to show you very quickly how I could pull in that, that aerial photograph from Format. I don't have to download anything. I can just use Format to do it for me. So I'm just going to go and find... Uh, where is this? Where are we? Where the hell are we? No, I was going to find them when road. In one. Okay, here we go. Here we go. We're getting closer. We're getting closer. Loftus, we're getting closer. Getting closer. Here's South Street. Uh, okay, we're here. Okay, it was this corner over here. So I need to specify set location only. Okay, this is going to be a bit tricky. Anyway, I'm just going to say import. So wherever this X occurs, you see this X over here will line up with my origin. So if we can kind of guess this as accurately as possible. But I can give you this exact coordinate. So say now that is my location. I can just say finish importing. Okay, and you can see, I was just off of the coordinates a bit. Okay, but it's brought in that aerial photograph. Right, so if I worked out these exact coordinates, guess what? That aerial photograph would have come in perfectly. I can get that information for you. Okay, I can see the aerial photograph's not that clear. But remember, you can pull in images later. You can pull in aerial photographs later and move this to the exact location and scale it to the correct scale. Okay. So that's definitely doable. I can get you guys a high res. That's what I'll do for you as well. I'm going to get you guys a high res aerial photograph just to help you with this. But you can see, neat. What I like about this option now, if you've worked accurately, if you select, if you go back to your layers, what I like about this is if you go right to the top, or be at the bottom here. If I switch on my terrain, guess what? I'll get my contours automatically. Okay. But... We're not going to work with that at the time being. I'm going to switch my terrain off. And I'll, I'll get rid of my satellite image. So delete that and delete my terrain. And delete this stuff. I don't need that. Okay, delete that and delete that for the time being. 